Hello everyone, it's Magic here and today we just got a new Lightroom update bringing AI lens blur to Lightroom. Something that we know from iPhones, take a picture and it just artificially blurs your image. I do have some mixed feelings about it and I'll break this down in a second but the second feature that I think it's even more exciting is the new color mixer. There's also new HDR editing format and some performance enhancements but today I'm talking about only the lens blur and the color mixer. Let's take a look at the lens blur first. So this is a feature that I love on my iPhone so I can just snap a picture and it just creates a nice looking blur in the background. But what makes it work with iPhone is that the iPhone in general it just takes flat images. It doesn't have a shallow depth of field. It doesn't have a big sensor it doesn't have wide open huge lenses covering that big sensor so you, you you actually do not have that shallow depth of field so you need to rely on that portrait feature artificial lens blur feature to actually have you know images looking more professional it's completely different with Lightroom obviously you can use your Lightroom for your mobile edits and I think this is like kind of the way that Adobe is going because for my professional work I'll be honest I don't see much use cases for this feature and I'll show you why so look at this this is my wedding picture this is actually a perfect example because I was shooting a bunch of group shots here with this view in the background and I was using anything between f4 to f2.8 because I wanted to have like more things in focus like more people in focus I wanted to see that background slightly more but then there was like a very short period of time that my couple were alone and I switched from f to 8 that you can see on this image to f14 that you can see on this image and you can see how the background changed so obviously having full frame cameras having fast primes like 35.14 or 51.2 you you just get that lens blur from the actual lens but now let's see if Adobe can turn this image into this image with its artificial AI lens blur so the lens blur is just right here it says early access because it's kind of a beta and you, you hit apply it takes a couple of seconds to analyze the image but look at this something that I really like about this is that you actually actually have a different options of bokeh so you can choose like a smooth bokeh you can choose bubble bokeh just like the bubble bokeh lens that I recently tested you can choose like this mirror lens type of bokeh so you have like different options of bokeh I wish I had that on my iPhone again but um, like you can see like right away the effect is pretty extreme and it's actually pretty good it you know it does have problems with things like veil and and hands here so it's not perfect perfect and it's never going to be perfect you can obviously refine it there's options to refine it right here you can visualize the depth here you can actually have your depth of field markers you can see like oh I want my image to be uh, you know more shallow depth of field or just less shallow so more things in focus so you have a lot of control and then refining options here but my goal is let's see if I can actually make this 35 with f2.8 look exactly like my f1.4 image so so what I'm actually going to do I'm going to set this one on the left as my reference photo so this is a shot at f1.4 and this shot at f2.8 so let's try to match it so I'm gonna lower the blur amount just to get slightly closer See, I think like somewhere around 20 is nice so I think this is the similar amount of blur there's a still quite big difference of like the blur character so it's definitely the 3514 like the, the blur is really it, it has a character it's it's not like super smooth blur so I'm gonna try to change it here it's not a like complete bubble bokeh but let's see how bubble bokeh will look compared to the original I switch to bubble bokeh it's I think it's slightly closer it's slightly closer it's not a bubble effect so it doesn't have like the empty you know little bokeh balls but it's similar and how about the mirror one I think this one is closer although still this is a more blurred than the original image so let's lower the blur let's try to find it 
Mm, okay, I, th I think this is the closest I can go for. Look at the difference in like, there's still a lot of contrast, even though this is blurred, there's still a lot of contrast in the character in that image. This is just way too smooth and way too artificial for my taste, but like it does a pretty good job. But you're gonna see a lot of mistakes in the small things like, you know, hands here, just look at look at this here, here, here. It's, it, like, it's gonna take forever to actually fix it. And at the end of the day, like for professional work, like, I don't know about you guys, I don't think I have ever had a situation that I thought like, oh, I wish that image was like more blurry in the background. Oh, I wished I used one four instead of one eight. Like these are the creative choices that we make when shooting photos. I do think that feature like this is just made for, for phones, for just a little devices that cannot shoot like this, cannot shoot the shallow depth of field in camera so my statement about this feature is that like i don't think wedding photographers like photographers like we do professional photographers will ever use it i said it but now let's talk about the color mixer feature because i think that's more exciting so this is my wedding from last year like quite problematic lightning scenario in the church. So I have that blue light coming from the back. I have that yellow light coming from the top and like orange chairs, everything is just super orange. So originally what I did, I just removed the saturation from orange. So that was my image. Because like if you try to play with a photo like this with your um, white balance and you go down with your white balance, you're gonna get in that blues really quickly because that blue light is just coming from the background so like i don't want that i want like all this to be warm and yellowish i just would like to fix like these faces and just tiny hue of that orange like i, I just want to take it slightly down but not too much so previously i would go to just the mixer and just go to orange and just like lower the orange but it was never super accurate and that's where the new point color feature comes in so now I can just pick a swatch. I'm gonna pick that darker orange on the skin and look at this. I can shift it right here. So I'm gonna shift the saturation slightly down. I'm gonna put the luminance slightly up and I already have like way better control over it. Look, I just changed one tiny swatch of, of color and I can visualize which parts of orange I'm actually changing and you can just change the range with this really great visualization of like, oh, which, which parts of the orange you're actually touching on. So while I don't think the lens blur is gonna be something that we're gonna use like often in our wedding photography work, I feel like this point color is gonna be way more powerful, especially in challenging lighting situations when you have mixed lighting and you need to fix like very specific, like small range of colors in your images. If you are a wedding photographer, let me know what do you think about these features. Make sure to check out my education website with my flash for wedding photography course and my presets. And thanks so much for watching. I see you guys very soon.